Wow, look how beautiful it is. You know, photographers live for the morning light. Everything is so much gentler, so much more serene. Okay, come on, let's make the most of the light. Hey, if uh, full auto is when the camera decides all settings, what is P? Program AE. That's when the camera decides your settings automatically, but you can fine tune it. Okay. How your pictures are lit depends on your exposure settings. It's really all about the balance between ISO, shutter speed and aperture. But apart from the brightness of your picture, aperture also affects what we call depth of field, which is basically the focus relationship between your background and your subject. Okay, quick, take my picture, take my picture. <sighs> okay, just hold it. So we have the beautiful skyline of Fudong and a buddy who's constantly bugging you to take a picture of her just to prove that she's been to Shanghai. And to pacify her, we'll need to have everything in focus, both the background and your friend. We'll also need to have a wider depth of field which is popular for most landscape shots. Alrighty, nice one. Hold it. There you go, big smile. So, set the aperture to something like f16. But F16 allows very little light onto the sensor. The bigger the number, the smaller the opening, right? So we need to balance that by adjusting the shutter speed so we can compensate for the lack of light. Let's try 1 over 30th of a second. Another one, another one, safety shot. Well, if your buddy is as vain as mine and she wants the attention all to herself, well, we need to have a narrow depth of field, not so much of the background in focus. So let's go full on on aperture, which is great for portrait shots. Now, you could decide on the aperture by turning the mode dial to AV, aperture priority, and let the camera decide the shutter speed for you. Or you could make the decision and go to manual. Okay, hang on. F 3.5 which already has the maximum amount of light coming in for this lens so we don't need the shutter to be open for that long yes 1 over 1000 big denominator faster shutter speed less light so to compare prove your buddy's been to Shanghai somewhere in the middle vain friend who wants all the attention So the relationship between aperture and shutter speed is really like yin and yang. See what I mean? Quick, I want to play with lenses, please! Really? <laughs> yes, please. But please. I'm hungry. Please. I haven't had breakfast. Let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> Are you done yet? No, I'm just getting started. When we're on vacation, we have to shoot the local cuisine. Well, I prefer to sample the local cuisine. And you will get to do that. But first, I have to tell you about my 18 to 135 mm lens. It's one of the most fun toys you'll ever get to play with, range-wise. There are two ways in which you can use this lens to take this shot. You could set it to a wide angle and move up close. Or, you could stand further back and zoom right in. But if you want to get details up close, you could use a more specialized lens. The macro lens, which is actually one of my favorites. You know, changing lenses doesn't have to be a big song and dance. It's actually pretty simple. Whenever possible, keep your camera facing down to avoid dust from entering. When you switch the camera on or off, the sensor cleans itself as well. Hold the lens that's already on and push the lens release button right here. Give it a slight twist and it's out. Remember to put your rear lens cap back to protect your lens. If you like, you could clean your other lens with some simple tools. A good microfiber cloth, a blower, a lens pen and you're ready. Join these two red dots together, just a firm but gentle twist, 
Make sure you hear the click. Great! That's the sound you want to hear. Now is actually a great time to use manual focus. Because autofocus may not be able to detect what's important for you in a macro shot. This way, you get to decide. Cool, look at this! Oh hey, have you tried the highlight tone priority before? Good idea! We can use this when there are several bright areas. For example, white clothing in a bright area. With highlight tone priority on menu, custom function 6, the whites won't get burnt out. I also get to keep the details and the gradation between the dark and light areas is so much smoother. You can also play with different white balance settings. See this button here? You can set to auto white balance or choose tungsten when you're indoors under this type of lighting and daylight when you're outdoors for the most natural colours. Hey, isn't your tea already cold? Good lesson learned. If your friend is a food shooter, order your own stuff first. <laughs> There's no better place to catch a glimpse of old Shanghai than through the water towns and one such place is Chu Jia Jia. The people here move around town in boats and it kind of feels like the Venice of the East. This place is about 1,700 years old. The streets, houses and gardens have been wonderfully preserved. There are so many stories to be told here. bad. But um, notice the darker corners around the pictures? Well, these vignettes happen sometimes when we use a wider angled lens. The 550D has a great function to correct this. Lens Peripheral Illumination Correction. Just hit the menu button. Scroll down. Check that the attached lens is displayed. Enable it. Then set. Yep, vignette's gone. Okay, so now I've identified a subject that I want to shoot, but he's in the distance. A 70 to 200 mm telephoto lens would be handy. But the more your lens zooms in, the more prone to shakes your shot will be. So you want to have a quick shutter speed and a tripod. One thing to note though, he's moving and I really don't want to risk getting blurred pictures. So one useful feature for shooting a moving subject is the AI servo. That way, as your subject moves, your focus moves along with it. You know, an old town like this has so much texture shapes, colour and vibrancy. Although some shots are better taken in black and white, this quaint little town would definitely suit that. You can adjust to your black and white mode here, or you can switch back to colour, whichever you prefer. In photography, we sometimes use what's called the rule of thirds. Framing your subject in any of these areas makes the shot so much more interesting. 
as you go along, take note of these framing patterns or lines. Let them inspire you to just explore. Wow, very nice. Thanks. I had time to explore. The night and its pretty lights, another photographer's favourite. Yes. And at night, during low light situations, you should use a long exposure. But chances are, you probably get grainier pictures. We can fix this, however, by reducing noise. Just select menu. Custom function then noise reduction. The perspective here is incredible. You can create visual dynamism by using our kit lens. Let's set that to the widest, 18mm. See how the perspective is dramatised? But if I zoom that to something tighter, say 50mm, you still get a great shot, but in this situation, the wider shot is a lot more dynamic. Or if you're in the mood to play, a fish eye lens gives your shot a more interesting perspective. Let me try. No, I want to shoot. Of course, you could play around with different compositions, especially when the sky and the foreground are equally inspiring. You could favour the sky, or focus on the river and houses. Mmm, both great shots. Thanks!